you a little bit earlier that I used, people used to always approach my mom and they would say, oh, you should do this with her, you should do this with her. And she would always say, mm -hmm, and smile and wave, you know, and say it, not say very much. But now I understand why she, my mom did that. And she was really basically protecting me because I could be like, right here, right now, but if you take me over there, I'll be over there. You know, I, I would have been everywhere. I was not mature enough to know what I know today. And that's very important in the things in the age group that we are, depending on your age. The resources and the values that you're taught is to tell, again, to teach someone else. So during the time that I was not in pageants, the Lord allowed me to be in this first pageant, and I ended up winning. And my platform is adoption of young adults. I didn't have to go out and find a platform, or platform is what we speak about, but it is my life and it's my passion. And again, I bring CAP, and that's why my heart, I just love the, the time I came. And to be here today, to be with you, I said my mouth is really dry, but anyway, here with you, it's just been a real blessing to me, personally, and I, I just really applaud you for what you all are doing here. Um, I want to bring out a scripture to you. I, I found in Proverbs. Thank you. Um, Proverbs 30, 31. Anybody familiar with the uh, book of Proverbs, chapter 31? Anybody? Jessica, you're not either? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Every day. All right, I'm going to read this. It's, chapter, it's Proverbs 31, 30. Uh, it says, Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Um, that's one thing that we talk about in our house, is about how beauty is passing, uh, and charm is very deceitful. And when I speak about forgiveness, um, it's in here. You know, if you have unforgiveness and you're harboring in your heart, whether you would like to admit it or not, it does come out in our faces, and it comes out in our actions. And this, the, the beauty, whatever, it is, it is passing. This is not going to stay. And, but what stays is what we, what we have in our hearts and how we treat other people and the kindness and what Christ has done for us and how are you treating everyone around you. And Ecclesiastes, oh, back to Proverbs first. This is Proverbs 11.22. Um, and that's a misconception about beauty that I wanted to bring out before I read uh, verse 22 because it says in Proverbs 11.22, it says, um, As a ring of gold in a swine's snout, so is a lovely woman who lacks Discretion. Does anybody know what discretion is? Does anybody know what discretion? Can anybody describe discretion, Abby? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just love that? Yeah, you over there. <laughs> she knows my name. <laughs> Can you describe discretion for us? Um, to be <coughs> the definition of a woman of God. To be meek and to be humble and to be. Why? Yeah, you, exactly. You use wisdom. You know, you can be beautiful all you want, but if you have, you don't have any wisdom and discretion how you, how you handle your daily life, then you can be like a pig with a little ring on your nose and be beautiful and think you're beautiful. And I, I wanted, that's one thing I'm really excited about sharing with a younger generation when I go up to Chicago, and so I'm excited about that. <laughs> so, um, in Ecclesiastes chapter one, uh, verse eighteen. It says, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. Um, in my life, I, with the different tragedies that have happened, they have taken a course in my life. They could have either really destroyed me. I mean, I have a, and these are, compared to a lot of, all of us that are in this room, everyone has their own story. Everyone has their own tragedies and their heartbreaks. Well, with mine, it was, you know, my consider the, the murder of my father, my divorce, um, the rape of my daughter, um, just different things that have happened. I just and I if I and also if I concentrate a lot of the adoptions in my in my heart and in my life and at home, if I concentrate on that, I, that's also a sorrow that has been in my life because of my daughters. Um, but with that, the Lord gives us a wisdom, and there is to when you acquire the wisdom that the Lord wants you to, you do have to go through grief and you do have to go through sorrow. And if you know in God's word, it says that, it, why surprise? Why get surprised? You're in this life. You're going to have much trials and much tribulation. And I, I know that each one of us have our own stories about that. Then, um, the, that, and I wanted to say that, okay, back in Philippians chapter 4, 
13. This is my life verse. Um, and it, does anybody know it by heart? No. Okay, I went to read it. Um, it's Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This has been actually my life verse since high school. Knowing how God knew me before I was even formed, I knew I was going to have to have that verse in my life because I can actually look at each one of you and know that when my dad was murdered, I was standing there and thinking, how do people go through something like this without God and Christ in your life? But you know, I did it because of him. I can do all things. Then I sit back and I look back at my divorce and all the, the things that happened. There were a lot of things in the period of two years of a lot of pain, a lot of growing, uh, a lot of my own disobedience in my own life. And I look back and I say, again, how do people go through this? I can back up with that verse. There's victory. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And again, I go back to Jackie's rape and I think back, how do people go through this? And God said, not yet, ready, Lane. <laughs> you know? But only through Christ I was able to get through that at that time in our whole family. And I think about my daughter's lives, like what Abby shared with you, and then I think about Jasmine's life, and Bethany, and even my own daughter Jessica, and my own daughter Nikki, each one of them have their stories, but the, I know that that verse also means that I can do all things through Christ. Only because I use this verse, I can do all things through Christ, that doesn't mean that tomorrow I can go out to the store and be killed by, by a truck driver, or I, my daughter, or my son, but you know, at that stage is permanent, like Abby said, it's a permanent thing. It doesn't change. It stays. And what comfort is that for all of us? It should be a lot of comfort. Um, then I go back to First Peter, chapter 2, verse um, 11 and 12. Just like that song that Jessica sang, um, Temporary Home, I wanted to read this Bible verse. Ooh. It says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. And you know, guys, we are passing through. I don't know each one of you personally, but I know because it's just life that you have gone through trials, and you might be going through something right now, but can you remember that we're just passing through? This is not our home. This is only temporary. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's only temporary. And um, I'm just thankful to be here. And if you have any questions for me right now, it would be a good time. So if you have anything to ask. Did you have any adoptions that you didn't get to do that you wanted to? You know, Actually, recently that happened in our home, and it was uh, a young lady, she was out of the, she's 18 and older, and <coughs> she wanted, she said that she really wanted a mom and dad, and we were communicating that way, because after you're 18, you make that choice, and uh, we were really hoping that she would be home with us, but she decided to do something else, and that, you know, you think even as, as many adoptions or many our family members that we have, it's still, as a mom, it really broke my heart, and it broke my heart because of she choosing the path that she did when there was help for her, and that that was hard. Do you intend to adopt more, or no? I had when a, will you stop, or will I you ever stop? Or I, I did a re, uh, an interview. That's one question they they did. One question they asked, and that we went. Let me just answer that by the, saying this: any time that you bring or you open your home and you become you become an adoptive parent or a mom or a 